Here's the story of how I studied A-level mathematics even before entering senior high or junior college. When I was in secondary 2, we were learning about algebra and we were learning about expansions and factorizations. We learned that you could expand the expression a plus b times a minus b into a squared minus b squared. I was sitting around and I was pretty bored in class and I was thinking to myself, what would happen if we were to convert the minus sign into a plus sign? I raised my hand and asked my teacher, what is the factorization of a squared plus b squared? He replied saying, not in the syllabus, you can go Google it if you wish. And I treated that as a challenge. It basically meant that I outsmarted my teacher or at least in my 14 year old mind, that's why I would think. So I did just that. I went home and I googled how to factorize the sum of squares, a squared plus b squared. I learned that if we were to treat minus 1 as the square of the imaginary number i, this allowed us to do the usual manipulations to obtain a plus ib times a minus ib. And what was even more fascinating is that I learned that this concept would in fact be tested eventually at the A levels. I was already exposed to the idea of complex numbers and imaginary numbers. So that got me really interested in learning higher level mathematics. The following year, at the end of the year, this would be grade 9 or secondary 3, my math teacher was going through the notions of differentiation. She mentioned the derivatives of polynomials, trigonometric functions, and exponentials. I remember that as we were learning about the derivative of e to the x, I asked yet again another simple question. What would happen if we were to convert e into the number 2? Now a disclaimer is that it turns out that the function e to the x is not a trivial notion at all. I've created an entire video trying to analyze this particular function. And when I raised this question to my teacher, she just replied, it's out of the syllabus, but I'm gonna get you something. And I'm like, I have no idea what that meant. All I knew is that I won yet another math argument because why not? The next day, this teacher asked me to find her after the class. And I was thinking to myself, oh no, I am in trouble. This is not a good thing. I rarely have run-ins with teachers where I'm not in trouble. So I went to find her, I was thinking to myself, okay, I'm gonna get scolded for some miscellaneous reason. Turns out my teacher was not out to punish me. In fact, she gave me four stacks of notes from another junior college and said, hey, here are some notes pertaining some higher level mathematics. Knock yourself out. Just return it to me before you graduate. And I was thinking to myself, okay, that's pretty cool. So I took the notes and I quickly flipped over to the page pertaining complex numbers because that's the topic that I was thinking about when I was in secondary 2. So I went over the complex numbers and sure enough, they did factorize a squared plus b squared, so on and so forth. And there was a component involving trigonometric and exponential forms. That portion confused me and I pretty much didn't touch these notes for the rest of the year, for the next few months. But more on these notes in just a moment. The following year, uh, the same teacher asked me to join a math challenge. Now it turns out that even though there was a qualifier which involved math olympiad questions, I couldn't really solve most of them because I wasn't really well trained in math olympiad. It turns out that my teacher still wanted to choose me for the presentation because she knew that I had good oratorical skills. Good enough to make YouTube videos I guess. So I joined the math challenge team and in the math challenge, we were required to create a solution to an existing problem. Back then, there were some flooding issues at the Orchard Road area, and so we had to explore efficient ways to remove the rainwater in the event of heavy floods. So my group and I worked on the problem, and it turns out that we actually won second place. And for second place winners, the prize was pretty cool. We actually won a graphing calculator, and this calculator is really much more powerful than the scientific calculator, which can be used to help students at the junior college level. So right now, I have a stack of A-level mathematics notes and a graphing calculator in my possession. Of course, the first thing I did when I got my graphing calculator was to play around with the square root of negative 1, because why not, right? But only in the second half of my O-level year did we start revising for the O-levels. I got pretty bored with all of the content because it's essentially repeating calculations with different numbers. It got quite tiring and droning, and then I decided, hmm, 
why not let us take a look at the A-level notes that have not been touching in the past year. Now, since the topic that we were working on was calculus, that is differentiation and integration, I was thinking to myself, why not let's just work on these problems? So I picked the book pertaining differentiation and integration and worked my way through example after example. It turns out that the notions of differentiation and integration at the A-levels are more or less aligned with these notions at the O levels. At most, you have a little bit of extensions, such as new integration techniques, or say, applying differentiation to calculate the Maclaurin series, or even using integration to compute volumes. But the core mathematical ideas were pretty much the same. The problem-solving intuitions were more or less similar to the O levels. Perhaps maybe the problems were a little bit more multi-layered and complex. Next, but otherwise, it was not the steepest learning curve between O levels and A levels. I still remember that I went ahead to learn integration by parts, and in the O levels, a question of the form differentiate something and then integrate something came out. I stared at the question quite a bit and I was thinking to myself, wait a minute, this is an integration by parts question. All I need to do is to use integration by parts. Now that being said, being in the old levels, which does not teach integration by parts, you had to follow the steps. But at the back of my mind, I was thinking, hmm, I can probably check my answer using integration by parts. And so I did, and it was correct. I still remembered my friend afterward asking me, Yo, Joel, do you notice that question? And I'm like, yeah, it's actually integration by parts. Not that he actually cared, but you know, it was what it was. After the exams ended, most of my friends and I went for our holidays and we came back and some of them decided to start working part-time at some locations. I was getting a bit lonely because all of my friends are working and I don't know what to do with my time. Well, I still had my notes that my teacher gave me and I still had the graphing calculator that I won from the math challenge. One day, I I went into a bookstore and I saw an A-level math book. I picked it up, I slipped to the first page and I started looking at the question and I'm like, I think we can solve this. So I went ahead to solve the question on the spot and was wondering to myself, can I solve the next question? Solve the next question on the spot as well. These questions built off the same intuitions from the O-levels Except that now we're using slightly different formulae, but otherwise it's really the same general idea. So in excitement, and with the fact that my mom graciously bought me a new computer, I went ahead to purchase the book and raced through the problems one day at a time. Every single day I would do one topic and whenever I got stuck, I would refer to the lecture notes that I had access to. I had a graphing calculator as well, so that really helped with the whole learning process. Now I couldn't actually solve every single question because there were some topics that were just not intuitively taught. For example, these included vectors, combinatorics, as well as hypothesis testing. And even complex numbers had a little bit of a challenge to it. But apart from these three topics, I more or less could figure out what was going on in all of the other topics at the A-levels. This allowed me to enter junior college having learned 90% of the math syllabus. And during the lectures, I could simply work on my homework problem sets. I do pay attention to the topics that I was struggling in, but even then it had its limited effect. Of course, after I graduated from junior college and started teaching mathematics, I had to figure these ideas out as concisely and clearly as possible. But if you would like to learn A-level mathematics as well and want the big picture overview, click on the video here.